Okay, I'm um, just testing my sound. So if you can hear me okay, just um, when you type in the chat, just put in the chat uh, where you're from, if you're an equine professional, and um, if the sound's okay. So um, I'm coming to you live from Rappahannock County, Virginia. Um, last night it was 27 degrees here. Um, this picture was taken just a couple of days ago, um, and we had snow on the mountains. So um, it's a little chilly day here, I've got a scarf on. Um, but, okay, so we've got California, the UK, Illinois, um, just got a physio pad, North Carolina, Colorado, it's great. Okay, so I'll just give it a minute and let people join. Therapeutic riding in Edmonton also, um, Harrisburg. These meetings have been amazing. It's, uh, you know, when I started this, I, I didn't know what I was getting into. I just thought, well, this would be a great way to reach out to people. Um, and it's been, the feedback's been really fantastic. Um, Bob Bowker, if any of you watched Bob's webinar the other day when he lost the internet and went totally black, 
Um, he's going to be joining me again tomorrow, Saturday at three o'clock um, Eastern Daylight Time. That's Virginia time. So be sure to tune in. I will record it. Um, probably plan on having your popcorn and your drink because uh, Bob went for an hour and a half at least last time and would have kept going if his internet hadn't died. So that was maybe a good thing to just break it up a little bit. Um, so I have, I have no idea. Oh, hi, Neva. I, I think I'm saying your name right. Um, so uh, Bob's really entertaining, um, wealth of knowledge. So join me on Saturday tomorrow. I'm adding that in because, um, because he went, went dead. So um, just to introduce myself, I'm Wendy Murdoch. I'm the creator of the Surefoot Equine Stability Program. In May of 2012, almost eight years ago now, um, I had the idea to put a pad underneath the horse's foot after talking to Dr. Joyce Harmon um, and seeing a horse that day that was lame in the right hind leg. Um, she told me to time it for 15 seconds, which I did, and that horse stepped off the pad and moved completely different in 15 seconds. Um, and so that changed my life. Um, and literally now we have um, people using Surefoot all around the world um, at all different levels from um, FEI and Grand Prix all the way down to somebody that wants to go on a trail ride and make their horse a little bit happier. So uh, I'm gonna talk a bit today about uses and some of the different pads and how I go about it. Um, what I find is that everyone gets started with some basic ideas that I give you and then your horse guides you. And so, so often I get questions from people about, you know, how often should I do this? Or how long should they stand on the pad? Or what if they don't want to stand on it that day? And what happens is, is, is that I give you some basic tools, but your horse is going to guide you. And that's because horses have a voice and a choice with Surefoot. We're not forcing them to stand on pads. It's totally an offer. And when the horses start to realize that we're asking what they would like, they start to respond by showing us. Um, there is always the horse that doesn't want to stand on the pads, and that could be for a variety of reasons. Um, my horse is the least interested. He has super feet. He's got really big frog stays, big frogs, really nice feet. He's always been very sure-footed and very grounded. And so we find that horses that, that don't need it that much are less interested. Um, and also, I'm going to just say that the, the horses that are um, neurologic, and what do I mean by neurologic? Well, that's a huge category, um, but horses that are compromised neurologically often uh, can't do or don't want to stand on surefoot pads because they're already unstable and surefoot makes that worse. So if you have any questions about the neurologic soundness of your horse, I tell people, please contact your vet, have a vet exam. Um, wait for them to tell you that it's okay to use Surefoot with your horse. We do have a veterinarian by the name of Dr. Sherry Johnson, who was just at Rudin Riddle in February, and she presented a two-day workshop, both uh, lecture and wet lab, about using Surefoot pads with neurologic horses. But of course, she is a veterinarian, and she's been doing this a lot. And so um, that's those are the kind of people that you need to be asking those questions to uh, but if you have any concern at all, always consult with your vet um, before you start using Surefoot because uh, you are asking horses to stand on unstable surfaces and if they're weak or if there's an injury, you've got to go about this process a little differently. Um, one of the most common questions I, I get in terms of soft tissue injuries is, you know, when can I use Surefoot pads with my horse that's got a suspensory ligament injury or uh, some other type of soft tissue injury. Um, and what, again, I tell them is please consult with your vet. You really need to have that exam to find out where you're at on the scale of injury. And also remember the other three legs. So you may not be able to do the injured leg, but the other three legs are taking more load. Just think about if you have a sore toe, how you shift your weight and now start to, to stand with the weight on the other foot. So the other legs are taking the load. So this is where you can support your horse by using the pads under the other feet and then under the direction of your veterinarian or when they give you approval, you can start working with that injured leg. So those are just some of the, um, is there a recording where she talks about neurologic cases? I, I know that she um, did that lecture. I don't know if it was recorded. I'm hoping to have her as a guest um, and so that we can talk about that, but she, I've had several conversations with Dr. Sherry Johnson. She is such a fan of Surefoot. And um, 
when I told her one person I thought was using the pads a lot, she said, no, no, I've got them beat. So she is, um, has been using Surefoot now for several years. And um, uh, I can give you, Niva, I can give you her contact information. And probably the best thing is for you to contact her directly and talk to her about it. But I am hoping to have her on as a guest because that to me is a, is a special situation where that's, um, you know, needs to be under very good guidance because there's so many causes of neurologic problems, um, you know, Lyme disease, EPM, um, you know, neck deformities. Um, and so the, it's a big category. And the first thing we need to do is kind of parse that down and have the diagnosis of exactly what is causing this neurologic problem. Um, I will tell you that we had one horse who had an injury and he then had some nerve damage in his front leg. And this was a horse that loved surefoot pads before these injuries. And then after the injuries, he absolutely refused to stand on a pad at all. But he was under the treatment of a veterinarian. And so they continued to offer him the pads. And what they could see is that at, in his recovery, he started to want the pads again. And so they knew they were at a certain stage of his recovery because suddenly he was interested in standing on the pads. But then he had a relapse, he did another injury and he didn't want the pads anymore. So um, sometimes it can give you uh, really good information about uh, where a horse is in their process. Um, and you know, there's horses I've had where, I had one mare in Germany when I was um, in Holland, I was over there uh, doing some filming and she was my absolute star horse and did everything we talked about on cue. And then I went to film again with that same mare, but she had moved to a different barn and she absolutely refused to stand on the pads. Well, fortunately, the chiropractor was coming the next day and they checked the horse and found out that she needed a, an adjustment. And after she was adjusted, she wanted to stand on the pads again. So there can be a variety of reasons why your horse suddenly stops liking Surefoot. But when you have that kind of situation, that's a big clue that you need to maybe take another look or kind of have a, have a check or see what's going on because that's an indicator that something has changed. And this is one of the ways you can use Surefoot is, is um, you'll see horses that have a particular pattern of what they like in terms of density and which feet. And then suddenly that pattern changes and it might change in a positive way. You see an improvement in balance and, and posture, or it might change in a negative way that the, suddenly the horse is standing in a very different position or not wanting that density. So keeping track of your horse, your individual horse, um, kind of you can either take notes or just kind of notice like on a routine, he wants a certain pattern and then all of a sudden it shifts. Um, we have had horses that are very particular. Um, there's one mare, it was a former show jumping horse and the woman came to me a year after she bought her pads and said that every day this horse wants to stand on one hard pad under her right front foot, only her right front foot and every single day. And if she offers the left front, the mare refuses, but right front foot every single day for a year. Um, other horses are more intermittent. They like to see the pads uh, less frequently, a couple times a week, maybe a couple times a month. Some horses want it every single day. And so this is where in the end, the horses are gonna guide you as to which foot, which pad, what to do. And I'm just giving you some basic suggestions and guidelines that get you started your ability to observe your horse is really going to be the key to success with your horse and surefoot. So um, if you have questions, I would appreciate it if you just put it in the chat um, at, because sometimes people put it in the Q&A and I have difficulty. I'm by myself today um, trying to manage chat, Q&A, video, and, um, and the screen. So um, I would appreciate it to just keep your, your questions in the chat if you can. Um, so I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm gonna screen share here and I'm just gonna go to some, some of my photos. I do have a couple questions that people have um, sent to me and one of them was about firm slants. So I've got those queued up so I can talk about that, but I'm gonna start here and uh, let me just make sure I can see the chat in case if you if anything happens and you can't see the screen just put it in the chat sometimes i don't queue up the right screen um like i said i'm by myself today so it's a little more interesting um so we 
started, we, we, we used to call this pad, the orange top pad, the impression pad. And we did that because it would take the impression of a foot, as you can see here. So this horse stood on the pad and I timed my horse the other day because one of the common questions is, how long does it take to get a good impression? So uh, my horse is about 1500 pounds. It was around 50 degrees and he stood on it for about two minutes and I had a really nice clear impression. So temperature and weight are gonna vary the time that it takes to get that impression. And what you wanna see if you can do is just keep the foot on that pad, but not let them kind of move the foot. If they step off, just kind of get the pad out of the way so that you get a nice impression. But what you can see from that is you can see how a horse is actually weighting his foot and you can see the distribution of weight. So in, in this picture, we see a very definite frog. We see nice weight at the back of the heel. We see a little bit heavier pressure here at the toe. And I think of the foot, the picture as like a clock, that 12 o'clock is to the toe, six is to the heel, um, three and nine o'clock. So I would say like 10 and 11 on the left front has more pressure. Um, if we look at the right front foot, we can see that that's quite even. And this might just be a little bit of shadow based on where the light's coming from. So someone's asked me this question of what is the science and how does it work? Um, there is no current science and we don't know how it works. And I mean, that's the, the bottom line answer, the simple answer. The more complicated answer is that I'm a scientist. I have a master's degree in equine reproductive physiology. And one of my first questions was what's happening? So one of the first people I called was Dr. Robert Belker because I've known him for years. And he talked to me about a study they did where they placed a washcloth under one hoof and watched the Doppler blood flow change in the opposite foot. So he was not surprised when I told him I was seeing these things of especially the deep relaxation in horses. Um, but in terms of having actual research, there isn't any at this point. However, there's a couple of universities that are starting to do research. Um, um, Dr. Stephen Adair at UT Tennessee has a grad student that's gonna look at the different muscle activation based on the density of the pad. And Raquel Butler at Charles Strutt University over in Australia is gonna look at gait analysis and respiration, heart rate, I think HBR. Um, I mean, this, what we have behind Surefoot is eight years of, of uh, on the ground experience and horse after horse after horse showing us similar results. Um, the, the pads, I've been doing this since 2012. I came out with the first DVD in 14. I came out with these pads in 16. And um, we have people all around the world using Surefoot having the same results, all the way from horse owners, veterinarians, farriers, body workers. And the beauty is that you can incorporate Surefoot into your practice uh, at all levels, whether that's a horse owner that just wants their horse calmer, whether that's a physiotherapist that's doing a treatment, whether that's a veterinarian that's rehabbing a horse, um, whether that's a performance horse that you want to relax before they compete. I have a Grand Prix dressage rider that takes the pads, whether the horse shows, puts the pad, the horse on the pads in the, war in the stall, um, and then goes and does her competition. Um, I worked with five racehorses and used Surefoot, and they all won their next race, but I am not saying it's simply Surefoot. Um, but that was a pretty good track record. So the, the, I've been having a whole series of webinars because the discussion about how it works, um, the bottom line is that the foot is a sensory organ and the foot has to report information back to the brain and the brain has to report information back to the foot to keep the whole system upright. And so when we start to recognize that, that we have um, Ruffini receptors, Pacinian receptors, nociceptors, um, proprioceptors, fascia, um, blood flow, all this stuff going through that foot to, to organize that entire horse. It makes sense that if we bring the horse's attention to his foot and how he's standing and offer him another idea, that he's going to organize himself in a new way. And that's what we see, changes in posture, behavior, and movement, and it can be in as little as one session. Um, do you find you get more accurate weight distribution impression during one foot at a time? I do both feet at a time to get a really accurate one um, because if you do one foot, they're standing on a two inch block and so they might shift. Um, and some people say, well, you know, you're working, I'm typically working on arena footing and you're not going to get as accurate an impression, but I'm not trying to make measurements off of that. I'm just getting a sense of how the horse is uh, distributing the weight over his two feet. So. 
Um, some people want to be a little more fussy and make sure the horse is on level ground. Um, here's a horse. Um, obviously, you can see that she's not very straight in her front legs, and we could guess where the load's going to be. Um, this is not the horse that we just saw the other picture of, however. So um, typically, if I'm getting that impression, I'll stand on them on the on the two pads to get that impression. Um, uh, do I ever leave them alone unintended with the pads? No, I do not, because I think that the person is as important to what's going on as the pads and the horse. Um, we, our observations are critical to noticing what's going on, and more importantly, I want the horses to associate me with the pads because the horses recognize the pads bring comfort. Um, when I work with my students, one of their biggest complaints is that the horses like me better than them. Um, it's simply because I've offered them something that they really enjoyed. Uh, but I use that to my advantage because my day job is teaching riding. Um, if I have an anxious horse that I can't get near, it's really hard to help the student. So I start with the pads. The horse recognizes that that's pretty cool. And pretty soon I can work with the rider and they'll stand perfectly quiet and still and I can do what I need to do with the rider. Um, and also, if that horse gets in trouble, he's going to look to me that because I offered him comfort. And this is where um, you can use your foot like going into a setting where the horse is going to get anxious, especially if he's used to the pads ahead of time. Um, you can take the pad with you. They're totally lightweight and portable. And you can trigger that parasympathetic response and remind that horse, hey, this is OK, and you can let down. So um, very often, I've worked with horses where, say, a corner of the arena they were really anxious in. So I start where they're comfortable, get them used to the pads, get them to being let, let down, and then I move toward that corner where they're not so comfortable. And I just offer them the pad and I say, would you like to feel good or do you want to be anxious? And since the nervous system is designed to seek ease, pretty soon they're like, oh, actually, I'd really like that pad. And I've got them, they're lowering their neck, they're licking and chewing, they're breathing. And then, you know, we can, we can get into the corner or get into the tight spot or um, yes, I have used them not in the trailer because it's too small a space. It's not safe to be trying to put pads around your horse's feet in a trailer, but certainly before I trailer them. Um, we had one horse that was had trailered to Virginia from Pennsylvania, trailered really badly, parked next to a golf course in a pen, couldn't stand the golf balls being hit. I showed up, it was somebody else's clinic, but I showed up and the horse was really upset. I worked with the half bit of sale pad for about 20 minutes. The horse calmed down. I said, let it eat as much hay as you want. They did. They put it in the trailer to go home, and they had a flat tire on the beltway around Washington, D.C. on a Sunday afternoon. And if any of you have ever been on the beltway on Sunday afternoon, you know how bad the traffic is. Um, that horse was in the trailer for 10 hours. He got home. He never stressed on the entire trip or during the entire process of having the flat tire. Um, so, in my opinion, having worked with him with the surefoot pads allowed him to be able to remain calm and relaxed during that entire thing. I should have had the people stand on the pad because they were really worried. Um, to become a surefoot practitioner, you need to attend a surefoot workshop. People ask me if I'm going to do them online. I am not. Um, I can do a certain portion of the lecture information online. But there needs to be an in-person part because I need to see, or one of my four hoof people that can train others, needs to see you working around the horse. Um, there's things that, you know, like keeping your hand away from the hoof. I say it a thousand times, and yet I see people in the beginning putting their hand down there by the hoof, which is an unsafe practice. And um, it's unsafe to show other people because if they don't have the skills you have, they're more likely to get in trouble. If you're bending over and you're down there with your hand by the foot and the horse spooks at something, he can come over the top of you. So the, at this point, I have no intention of, of qualifying people strictly um, by Zoom meetings or I need an in-person piece to complete that process. Um, you can go to my met website, murdochmethod.com under the Surefoot tab and it talks about how to be a practitioner. And yes, I am really trying to get practitioner trainings in the UK. Um, I'm, I thought I had it. And then of course this pandemic came along, but we are definitely uh, working on that idea. And Donna, hi, nice to see you out there. Um, this horse here, I've shown this picture quite a bit. Um, this horse had had Lyme disease. She was treated for Lyme disease. This is how she was trotting to the right after the Lyme disease consistently twisting her neck, 
we did one session of Surefoot. And so a session is where I'm working with the horse with the pads. I, you know, put a foot on the pad, he goes for a walk, you come back, you do another foot, you go for a walk, you go for a walk, trot, canter. So the entire time on the pads is maybe 10 to 15 minutes in a 45 to 50 minute session. Um, it's interspersed with movement because I think the movement uh, helps integrate what the horse experiences on the pads. I needed her to come for another video I was filming the next day. As you can see, this is a different location. This is the change we had in the horse from simply one session. She never looked back. She went on to be a school horse at a university. She never saw the pads again, and she maintained this new posture um, in one session. Um, and while not all horses are gonna make that kind of change in one session, I have absolutely seen it, um, and other people have as well. Um, depending on how long standing a pattern is, how young the horse was when it happened, um, if there's an underlying problem that hasn't been uh, recognized yet, all those factors go into how well it sticks. Um, but, oh, I should talk about this horse. Um, this horse here, you can't see it in this picture, but she was um, stolen with 22 other horses, crossed state lines, run through a fence, cut her upper arm down to the bone, took over a year to heal. We did one session with her and she went from totally um, exploding, going past the open doorways. The next month I saw her, they did nothing in between. Her, her muscling completely changed. She had a top line and her movement was completely different. And we did a second session. So, you know, it's not unusual to see horses continue to process and improve from even one or two sessions. Uh, there's head shaking syndrome. So head shaking syndrome is, is one of those things that uh, um, as far as I understand, no one completely understands it. Um, I do have someone right now that's uh, doing a case study, working with a horse with head shaking syndrome. Um, what I can tell you is it it won't hurt. And if you can bring comfort and calm those horses down and help them get into a more parasympathetic state, it may, but I, I can't make any promises and I don't have enough um, uh, cases where people have come to me and said, my horse was a head shaker and I did this and this is what happened. Um, but that's the kind of thing, if you go and join the Fans of Surefoot on Facebook, it's a group called Fans of Surefoot, um, you can ask those kind of questions up there and we're building, a, uh, I've got about 1500 people in there now that have been using Surefoot and it's a great place to ask questions. And if somebody has worked with a head shaker, um, they'll pop up and give you an answer. Um, what happens if they only have a toe on the pad and why are they doing that? Um, you know, the horses get to choose and that's uh, the thing that for me is the most important and why they're doing something, um, anybody's guess. I make the assumption that the horse knows his body better than we do and that he can feel things through his feet including vibrations that we may not ever feel. Um, and so I've seen horses that will only rest a toe, that will just put a corner of a foot on the pad. I had one mare, she was a super alert mare. Um, it I took the rider off and I spent 15 minutes getting a quarter of an inch of her foot, left front foot on the pad, left front because it's safer and they're used to being handled on the left. Um, and then she walked a circle and came back and presented her left hind foot. I picked it up, I put it on the pad. She stood there, I put the rider back on. I could repeat that left hind foot with the rider on. The next day she looked like a, a peanut pushing quarter horse. Completely different top line, had totally let down, but she let me know what she wanted. And we started with just a quarter of an inch of her foot on the pad. Um, this horse here is highly unusual. I've only had one horse do this, but he never even stood on the pad actually. This is the half physio. It's an inch and a half, inch of hard, half inch of medium. And the owners had had him for two years and had never seen this horse yawn. And all he did was drag his toe over the pad and then yawn like crazy. And he's totally loose in this round pen. He could leave or go wherever he chose. Um, he just literally just toe, toe scraped it and then yawned like crazy. So um, I can't even begin to explain this and how it worked. I just have seen it. Um, and um, this particular horse is highly unusual, but that's the, one of the really interesting things about Surefoot is you never quite know what you're gonna see. 
Um, you never quite know what's going to happen. And I'm looking for another horse where I can um, show you something that was really interesting that happened. Where, where is that picture? Oh, this horse. So I've been doing this for eight years. Um, this was about year three. Um, this horse's name is Huey. He is a thoroughbred, used to be a jumper. He was at this barn. I had Linda Tellington Jones there. I was demonstrating Surefoot to her. I had two horses under saddle that I had just worked with and we saw the typical relaxation, increase in stride length, all those good things. And then I said, do you have a difficult horse? And they said, yeah, we have Huey. And so they brought Huey out and I did each front foot once or twice and then I did both front feet at the same time and he literally fell over and laid there on the ground like this for five minutes. Um, and I, I first thought I killed him. Um, Linda Tellington Jones was standing there and she did not run over to do ear work so I knew he wasn't dead and then she pointed out that he was breathing and he was and he laid there. I, you know, I don't know if he fainted or what happened but he laid there for about five minutes with 20 people standing around him all having conversation and then he got up and he was totally fine. Um, I've only ever had one horse do this. Uh, I'm just pointing this out because you never know what's going to happen and um, so it's important to pay attention. Yeah, first time yesterday, she would have stood on the pad forever, both front feet and back, walked her after about five minutes. She was very willing to restand. Is that unusual? No, that's not unusual. A lot of change when I rode her, much better balance. Um, Anna Lee, that's totally not unusual. That's the middle of the bell curve. Um, Huey here is way out on the edge of the thin edge of the bell curve. Your horse is in the middle. Um, I just suggest you keep the session short in the beginning because they are working the little tiny postural muscles and we don't want to make them sore like uh, you know, if you're starting a new exercise program. What do I mean by letting down? Well, Huey here has done it to the extreme, um, going from sympathetic to parasympathetic, going from neck up, fight and flight to neck down relaxation. Um, we literally see breathing changes in three to 10 seconds. We've timed it. Um, let me get to back to some videos. Um, we see this very uh, deep relaxation. Um, we see swaying, licking, chewing, sighing. So as you can see here, I think I can make this bigger. He, uh, he's like, uh, was kind of falling asleep and then uh, caught his balance because he lost his balance there a little bit. And then I can't make it bigger right now. But you can see how, if you look at his face, his eyes are super soft and then he brings his foot back, steps off that pad, right? Steps off the other pad. But look at the continued level of relaxation. And so what I always tell people is that tension is the enemy and that tension is what causes so many of our problems in training and riding and treating horses. And that if we can help them let go of that tension and toggle that parasympathetic switch, that rest and digest, then the horses are going to recover better. They're going to perform better. They're going to relax better. They're going to be better citizens. Um, and what I've discovered is that most behavior problems are balance problems. That most of these horses that we label as behavior problems really aren't behavior problems, they're balance problems. And what I mean by that is I went to this one thoroughbred rehab center and I had 15 minutes because I had to catch a plane. And I saw this gray horse and I asked for the gray horse and they said, no, you don't want him, he's a butthead. And I said, that's exactly the horse I wanted. And the woman argued with me for about five minutes and finally she brought the gray horse out all I had was a half physio pad. I was on the right side, so I picked up the right front foot. I put the pad on the floor. I put his foot down, and in under five seconds, this horse dropped his neck, let go of the lead shank, and stopped all behavior, negative behavior. And in 15 seconds, this horse was totally chilled out. So if he's a butthead, then he should not let down like that. In my opinion, what these are are horses that are not okay. Um, please watch some of my videos about vagal nerve. Um, they're not okay, and so they, ex they express that in fooling around or what we call negative behaviors, and all they're looking for is the ability to let down and be okay, to feel safe. Um, and I have one friend that calls that fooling around behavior domesticated flight because they, we don't allow them to run away, and now they have to f do something with that anxiety. Um, okay, I've got a bunch of questions here. I'm going to talk about slant pads. I have a young horse, five years old. I will start working with him under saddle soon. Absolutely help before you work with him. We have people now that are using Surefoot with their horses before they ever get on their backs. 
um, and improve their balance before they ever get on. And so those horses are so much better balanced when they get on. So yes, and as that horse is growing, that's also a time where you can, um, oh, I know where my slant picture is. You can, you wanna keep introducing the pads because as they're growing and they're changing, you wanna keep establishing a better balance. So here's the, the slant pads. They come in hard slant, which is pink topped, and firm slant, which is yellow topped. And they're a three inch height at the back, and they're a, obviously a wedge shape. You can use them heel high, as I illustrate here, heel low. You can use them in supination and, and pronation. So you can use them in, in any direction. And what they do, here's a horse on slants on the back feet. I'm just going to play this video. Um, in the dogs, we have people using what we call now sure paws pads, and there's slants that they use, and um, the um, therapists are, can feel, literally feel the psoas muscle let go when the dogs are standing on the slants. Uh, that was a short video. Maybe I have a longer one. Nope. Hang on. Um, now, I can't make that claim with horses because um, I, I just can't, but when we put people on the slants and they stand heel high, what they all report to us is that their lower back feels better. So you can see this horse here, he's turned that pad, so now it's sideways, and you can use them in this direction. Um, I almost always use them heel high. Here's hard slants. These are orange, but they're still the hard slants. That's, just don't worry about the color, okay? So it doesn't matter the size of the horse. Um, and to me, what I wanna do is support that whole foot and especially with your long toe low heel horses, um, I really like to offer the slants. Here's just a really big horse and you can see that he's licking and yawning, um, heel high. So um, I, I like them a lot. I use them quite often. Um, here's a huge horse, he's 18 hands and he's on the pink slants. You can see he almost engulfs the entire pad uh, and he's just resting a toe back there. It's not unusual to see them resting a toe. Um, I, I rarely use them uh, heel low because I, I don't want to put that kind of stress on the, on the um, legs. Um, this horse here, he's on a full physio pad in front and hard slants behind. And you can watch how he adjusts himself. And I'll just let that play while I check out some other questions here. We have lots of putting them while icing after work. Sure. I mean... Uh, part of the recovery workout, absolutely. Um, pre and post exercise, and you can combine surefoot with other things. So I see no problem combining that with icing. Uh, quarter horse gelding, 17 years old. He has trouble with all four feet being extremely sensitive on anything besides soft grass or footing in the ring. He also has issues with his right shoulder. Okay, so um, we, some of these sensitive horses um, take some time getting, uh, accepting surefoot. I had one horse, super sensitive feet, four days, never stood him on a pad, but the owner watched how I progressed with that, putting myself between the horse and the pad so that he would feel safe with me. And later she sent me a picture of him standing on pads. Um, I would suggest that with that, that horse that you start with the half physio pad, because it's only an inch and a half thick, it's the lowest profile, just start with the easiest foot to pick up. Um, keep the session super short, like a couple of minutes, because you can always come back and do it again and give them a lot of rest in between and just see how it goes. Um, some of these sensitive sold horses, you put them on a pad and they feel like they've, you've given them bedroom slippers and they've gone to heaven. And others are just really, really, um, think of per, a person who's ticklish, foot ticklish, and anything really kind of bothers them. Um, it may take some time, um, but I would definitely start with the half physio pad with that horse. Um, he also has issues in his right shoulder on and off. Um, we see a lot of um, uh, shoulder issues and that sort of thing really helped with Surefoot. Um, you have several unbroke horses, two-year-olds. Yes, I would definitely start with your two-year-olds before you saddle them, like start now. Um, we've worked with, oh, let me see if I can find, um, we worked with a, I'm just gonna pause my screen share here for a second so I don't make you nauseous while I kind of zoom through my pictures. Oh, here he is. Um, this, this, uh, can you see this full? If, if you're not seeing the picture I'm putting up, it's a paint full standing on a half physio pad. Just let me know because sometimes the screen doesn't come up right. Um, this was a twin full. 
um, he was a surprise. The twins were a surprise all the way around. Uh, the woman had to get him up. He could not get up on his own. She was feeding him every couple of hours. We went there to see him and we kind of scattered the pads around and kind of guided him over the pads and not really worried about what he stood on. Um, the next day he was bucking and jumping around. Um, they've done um, some other things with him, but they continue with the surefoot pads. His legs have totally straightened out. Um, so we've had foals. Thanks for letting me know you're seeing it. We've had foals um, on surefoot pads, yearlings. Um, I've worked with yearlings. We have people putting horses on pads before they start them. Um, when you think about it, you as they're growing, their body's getting really awkward and growing different heights, just like kids. Uh, and anything we can do to keep, keep help balancing the system through that growth is going to make it better. And they're gonna be really secure. So yeah, um, it's amazing. Funny, when I was first introduced to a horse as a horse symposium, I had a lower back issue, stood on them and felt better. That's awesome. All right, so let's see. Here's the pink slants, um, heel high behind. The horse is standing on both. You can see there's something's happened to that hawk. Um, there's that guy yawning. Here he is starting out on hard slants. And the thing to notice here is when we started with this horse, how he would organize his head way over to the side. And one of the issues this woman had in riding is he wouldn't stay on the rail. We did work with him under saddle. I think we had three sessions with this horse. And her comment was that he was going straight and she didn't have to hold him to the rail. Um, under saddle, that's one of the very common comments we get is um, there's a Grand Prix rider over in Germany. I spent some time with him. And his comment was that he no longer had to train his horse. He simply had to ride his horse because he didn't have to deal with all the kind of glitchy little patterns that the horse was exhibiting. Um, we saw this horse earlier standing on the full physio pad in front and the hard slants behind. I've now progressed to soft and just notice how much this horse is swaying. So when you see a lot of sway in your beginning sessions, just keep the sessions short because you are starting an exercise program with these horses and you can make them sore. You could always come back and repeat it later, but you can't undo soreness, you know? I mean, it's like the weather turns nice and when we finally get out of lockdown and we go out and we think we're gonna like run 10 miles or something like that. And then the next day we're suffering for it because we overdid it. So just always keep that in mind when, when you're working with your horse, the more swaying you see, the shorter you wanna make the session, unless the horse is really experienced on the pads. Um, this was a Grand Prix horse in New Zealand a horse that the woman reported was anxious. Um, I'm pretty sure I started with the half physio. So I usually, if I don't know the horse and they tell me it's anxious, I do half physio hard before I get to firm. Um, firm is green and we have lateral instability when you start with firm. And you can see she's on a pink slant behind at this point and the firm pads in front. And we get this lovely big yawn. Very common to see these really awesome yawns. Um, this is Ida Hammer working with a horse that had a lot of arthritis. It was super painful, just super uncomfortable. Um, she brought him in the ring and you can see that he's completely free, no halter or anything. And they stood him on the full physio pad, which is twice the size of a half physio pad. Um, if I could only have one pad with me when I travel, I would travel with a half physio pad because it'll fit in my bag and there's a lot of horses that it would just benefit with from. Um, and while we don't profess to say that this is solving everything, we've had um, a number of reports, uh, probably a, over a half a dozen of people whose horses were colicking and they put them on the pad. Typically, um, they seem to be using the physio pads and the horses stop colicking. So I always tell people, call your vet, then go grab your pads. And um, we had at this clinic, one of these people, these are all, these are all barefoot trimmers, um, one of them that night um, found, was at a barn and the horse was colicking and they put the half physio pad because she just had gotten it from me that day under each foot for about five minutes and after 20 minutes the horse was fine. So um, always call your vet, you know, don't risk it and then you'd much rather cancel them than, you know, have them show up and things are really bad. Um, and But grab your pads and give it a shot because um, there's there's no harm in it. If the horse doesn't want it, they'll step off. Um, so this is a full physio pad. What you can see is it's, it's really big. You can get two feet on it. And that's the point here. We just have it under one foot, but you can turn it sideways and have it under both feet. 
it has two different materials. So if you flip it over, it's a half inch of medium, it's softer. On this side, it's an inch of hard. Um, we have a lot of people, this pad actually, when I had surgery two years ago and they had to reattach glute medius, um, I couldn't stand on my left leg without holding onto something. And I randomly put the pad down and I could stand on my left leg for 15 seconds without holding on, which I absolutely could not do without standing on that pad. So I have personal experience of the benefits of, of the physio pad. Um, I just wanna pop this x-ray up here. This is um, from Dr. Deb Taylor and Ida Hammer. Um, Ida was down at Deb's, they, she works with Formahoof and they had a quarter horse Rainer that was club back feet and he was super uncomfortable. So they had put him on the physio pad, but then they got the idea to put him on the physio pad on top of the x-ray block. And as you can see, he's really pushed down through this toe and he's actually, here's the level of the pad here, but he's gone down so deeply that he's deformed the medium layer down onto the plate. And you can see how little uh, weight distribution there is at the back of the foot. Um, by doing this, they changed their concept of how they wanted to trim him. And then they did form a hoof and that horse whooped off super happy. So um, we're exploring that idea now. We've, we're um, messing around with it. Um, it doesn't matter, common question, doesn't matter if they have shoes? And the answer is no. Um, that was a question I had very early on. Uh, there seems to be, uh, it works just fine in shoes and boots or barefoot. And I can't say that, um, that one's better than the other in terms of the effects that we see with surefoot. We see effects with boots, shoes, and barefoot. Um, this horse here was having difficulty standing at the mounting block. So we use the pads. I don't have a picture of her standing at the mounting block. We use the pads at the mounting block to make it really a nice place for her. And um, then she could stand there quietly and the mounting block became a positive place instead of a negative place. Um, yeah, Dr. Bowker is gonna be back tomorrow at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, just make sure you got your popcorn, your glass of water and you've gone to the bathroom before he starts because it'll probably go for a couple of hours. Um, I have not worked with Dr. Deb Bennett. Um, I have worked with uh, Dr. Hillary Clayton. In fact, uh, hang on, I'm gonna pause my screen for a second while I find that picture. Uh, where is it? Um, I went to Michigan State really early on in this process because I um, know Dr. Clayton and I was trying to figure out what was going on. And so we actually um, put a horse, uh, we put, oh, here it is, uh, Zoom share. So, so here we are at Dr. Clayton's and there's Dr. Joyce ha Harmon, Dr. Rosemary Ganser, Dr. Clayton, and a lot of other vets walked by and her technicians. Um, a lot of other vets came through and we put the horse on pads and we had, you can see the shiny dots. We were looking at the kinematics and also the pressures on the feet. Um, sadly, that data has never been analyzed. It's in a prioritized system. Um, at this point, it's so old, I don't even know um, that it's recoverable. Um, we did the pads with the horse, but then at the end, we decided to do the pods and you can see the pods underneath the feet here. And what was so fascinating was this horse yawned like crazy when we switched to the pods. And we did not see that yawning with the pads. So pods are really interesting. I think of them as more advanced because you need to be able to position the foot a little bit more than you do with the pads. Um, and I'll show you a bunch of other pictures of pods. One of the things that was fascinating about doing this study is that we had allocated a certain amount of time to get the readings done, but it went much faster than predicted because all the horses relaxed and let their necks down and so they could get the readings really fast. The doorway is off here to the, to the horse's left and typically the horses are busy kind of looking out the door and so they're moving around and it's harder to get readings. But in this case, using Surefoot, it was really easy and, and uh, here's Dr. Clayton on some pads. <laughs> so I, I also put people on the pads um, before they ride and during my riding clinics and um, there's Huey, and it really makes a difference. We have, um, yeah, lot, oops, wrong, wrong file. Let's see, let's go down here. So I'm trying to get back to the, 
the videos. Um, doesn't matter the size of the horse. This is a little pony. We used two full physio pads just to show you the size. You could get all four feet um, or a Frisian. And so then he kind of takes up the pad in a little different way than the pony. Uh, interested in certification? Yes, we have a practitioner workshop. So right now they're on hold because of the pandemic. Um, you can go to my website, Murdoch Method, and under the Surefoot tab, it talks about the practitioner workshops. Um, go there, but the best thing too also is to email me so I get you on the list and join Fans of Surefoot on Facebook page because that's where I put up a lot of um, the information about upcoming workshops. Doesn't matter if it's a mule, a donkey, a horse, as long as it's got a hoof, it's gonna make a difference. This is full physio pad in front with the slants behind. The firm slants are gonna give more than the hard slants um, because they're made of the same material as the firm pads. So you're gonna have some la more lateral instability with those pads. Um, whereas this is a full physio pad. This is actually my horse. Um, and you can um, see it gets two feet on them. So um, I always offer the pads to the horse before I put them under the foot. I just hold them out. Um, the, when you initially start, a lot of horses just completely ignore it. Um, but I still make the offer. And then after they've been on a pad and for one foot, even if it's for 10 seconds and they walk off, it's totally okay. Um, but then they get very curious and they want to smell the pads. They want to look at them. You got to be careful. They're not warranted against being bitten. Um, some horses want to put their teeth on them. And, um, but they get very curious, very interested in them. And so um, some horses you offer it once and they're done and other horses want to want to check it out. This is that same horse. And here's what I'm talking about in terms of the, the results. This really soft eye, the soft relaxed muzzle, the soft jaw, the soft ears. These are all the signs that we see when horses are on sure foot pads. Um, this was back when I was working with some prototypes, but this really deep level of relaxation that lasts for um, quite a while. And of course yawns, let's see, what's the, uh, the big pad is called the full physio pad. Um, I'll just go back and show you this. So it's an inch of hard and a half inch of medium. It's the lowest profile. In other words, all the other pads are two inches. This one is an inch and a half. And um, that we, we designed it originally for farriers uh, because if the horse is uncomfortable, everybody's unsafe. So we thought, let's make a pad that the horse can stand on while he's being shod. And that way, um, everybody's safer because you can give that horse comfort. Now we've had, we have a lot of farriers now that have barefoot trimmers that have discovered the physio pad and you just you know place it under one of the feet while you're working on another foot and there are many horses that they we've had farriers tell us that they could not work on that horse until they use the pads and then once they do they can and the thing is there is the the trimmer or farrier is going to do a lot better job if that horse is comfortable instead of uncomfortable and and the, our whole goal was to make everybody safer so even long ears this is a uh, hard slants here you can see it's got an angle and you can see there's kind of standing on it fairly strongly. Um, this is, um, her name is Felicitas von Neumann Cosell. This is the Grand Prix dressage rider I was telling you about. I'm gonna have her on for a webinar. I think it's this week coming where she can talk about how she uses Surefoot in her program. She keeps the pads in the corner of the arena she brings them out. She doesn't do it every day because she finds if she does it every day, it kind of becomes too routine. Um, she'll put the horses on a combination of pads. Here she stacked them and she'll do her stretches. Now she's obviously done the stretches on the horses before she ever used Surefoot and then she did Surefoot and then she combines it. So you, you, know, you wanna give the horses a chance to process each new idea and information before you start combining things because in many cases, just doing the pads is so much information for that horse that they don't need more at that point. Um, here you can see she's triple stacked this horse. Um, stacking is something that uh, you can do. Um, it's not required or necessary, but it is different. And again, the horses need to be really comfortable with just regular pads before you start stacking. Um, she started doing this and was putting pictures up on Facebook and I had to drive up and see her and find out what the heck she was doing because I was so surprised. Um, but she's, she takes her pads with her when she does clinics and 
works with the different dressage horses and finds that it works out really well. Um, let's see if we have any questions. Oh, pods, I know. Oh, here's, I just wanna show this example. This horse pronated, no, he supinated really badly. So this is actually a hard slant with a firm slant and they're set up to put the horse into a little bit more supination. And then I actually reversed it and did it the other way and put him in pronation. Um, in addition to doing heel high and heel low. So why am I doing that? I'm, I'm a Feldenkrais pr practitioner by training and the whole idea with Feldenkrais is to support in the direction that you're going initially to let the nervous system calm down so that you can then come in with a new idea. Because if I confront you, you're gonna recoil a bit. So if I come in and, and, um, and, and give you some support in the direction you're already going, you calm down a little bit, the nervous system relaxes, and then I can come in and offer a new idea. So, so much of Surefoot is based in the Feldenkrais uh, philosophy and met methodology of, um, you know, less is more and go with ease and that sort of thing that um, it's just like I'm, I'm offering that to that horse. Uh, somebody asked me how to sign in for Dr. Bowker's um, webinar tomorrow. I've posted it on the Surefoot Equine Facebook page, if you go there, and I will be putting out an email tonight, um, hopefully soon. Um, and so the registration for Dr. Bowker is up there on the Surefoot Equine Facebook page. Just like the page while you're there and join the fans group so that you can get more info. Um, this is that same horse actually, um, hard slants behind and you can see that they have you know, more density and so he's not sinking in terribly much and medium in front, which is very springy. So the medium is a springy pad. Um, people like the medium the best. Um, pods, I'm looking for pods. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're probably over in videos. Oh yeah, oh, that one's sideways. Let me find one that's not sideways. I'm gonna pause my screen so I don't make you nauseous. Um, here's pods. Okay, so pods, again, I think of them as more advanced. And what I really like about them is that um, they make it more obvious how the horse habitually loads his foot, whether that's toe loading, heel loading, a high-low pattern, one heel up, one heel down. Um, and I basically, I kind of aim for the third row of dots when I'm placing the foot. I um, talk about how to do that in a video on my YouTube channel on Surefoot Equine um, in the Quick Start Guide. And um, so I don't wanna take the time here because we're getting close to running out of time. Um, but wherever the foot lands on the pot or doesn't, this is back feet, obviously, there's a tail. And you can see that he side slipped off of this one, right? And he's, and he's slipped off the other one a bit to the back. So you get to see um, how they load their feet and it makes them more aware of how they load their feet. I'm just trying to get that out of the way. Um, and they'll change, like you trial them again, you offer it again, and they'll do it differently. And so you can see this horsey, this is at Felicitas, she's got her pile of pads in the corner, he's been on pads before, um, and now he's standing on four pods. And I don't think I can zoom in so you can see how he's loading, but you can see on the back feet now that's different than the picture we saw before. There's that really deep level of relaxation, the eye blinks, the ears, the muzzle, and then the swaying that, you know, we don't have any good explanation for um, other than we see it and we see a variety of patterns, right? So this horse at this point, I'm gonna tell you is incredibly balanced because he can turn his big 50 pound head at the end of his three foot lever arm and stay on his four pods. Um, and so now we can see nice lick and chew and he's processed that information, a little tail flick there. Um, and so, you know, the pods I find quite interesting when the horse is ready for it. Um, here's just, he's on the pods again, you know, and you can see how he's swaying there and really, uh, uh, yeah, interesting little neck movement, kind of getting into it there. Um, and, you know, he's, he can walk off anytime he wants because he, he knows the routine. Um, and that's the thing, it's, it's really important to make sure your horse understands that he has the choice to walk off. Um, certain horses will not move off, like your driving horses, they're trained to stand. So in those cases, if a horse has been trained to stand, I will um, walk them off so that they know they can. Let's see, let's see, looking forward, right. Um, 
Uh, he may have done a twitch in his left shoulder. We see all kinds of things of twitches and head wiggles and, um, yep, there he's just stepped off. And we took him for a walk. Um, trying to think of what else I've got here in my five minutes. So um, cribbing, you know, cribbing is one of those things that it's kind of like chain smoking. Um, it may help, but I'm not going to say it. it's going to help. I will tell you it's worth a shot. I mean, anything's worth a shot if you can um, give them really happy chemicals in a way that's not cribbing. Um, this is also from Heide Hammer. This is a stifle, the tail is to the left. And when I talk about that, you know, you've got to be wanting to keep your duration short in the beginning. The reason I'm saying that is that look at how much movement's happening in this stifle. And I'm just going to take this video and kind of scrub it a little bit so you can see just how much shifting right there. See, it goes in to out. And so this is where keeping your duration short, and when I say short, it could be you know 30 seconds to a minute, and then you just come back again, because you are asking some horses, especially weak horses, this is a huge ask for them to have to start working their body in another way. Um, and yes, they might be really enjoying the pads and you might see a huge amount of deep relaxation, but at the same time, we have to be good parents to our horses and recognize that they don't know they're gonna be sore the next day. Um, this is little Mustang that was in a 90 day challenge, came off the range, was um, very, very suspicious. Um, this is probably the third session over three days. I started in the round pen with her loose. And the reason I'm showing you this video is one, the owner is standing on a pad, but two, this horse has been on pads now for the third day. We get this lovely licking and chewing and the eye blinks, and then when she comes off, I think this is the one, I'm just gonna, oh no, this is, uh, here, it's this one. When she comes off, she's startled because she's not totally, yeah. She kind of looks down, right, looks over. Oh, maybe that's not the video. But she, she did the ear cock and the, kind of suspicious. And so you always want to be careful that the horse, yeah, so she kind of startled herself. And if you look at her expression right there, that kind of concerned, she, she, I don't think she was totally aware that she was on four pads. And so she suddenly discovered, oh, there was a pad behind her. So, you know, you always want to use some caution and be aware, especially with um, Mustangs or um, horses that have unknown histories, because um, as much as they're enjoying the surefoot pads, they can be startled by it if they're if they have a history of of anxiety. Um, let's see, I have two minutes. So, uh, Neva, did I answer your questions? <laughs> I know that you're out there. I was stuck siphles on both sides. Which pad? I, I personally, I start with the flat just to make sure they're okay. But then I would go to a a slant pad, heel high, um, with your horses with stuck stifles. Um, because I just want to kind of offer them that, that idea. So, um, but again, your horse always gets to vote. And by the way, your, your laminated horses find the pads really, really comforting. Um, uh, Felicitas, she had a horse with chronic um, laminitis and he really, really loved the soft, but we've also used the firm slants very successfully with a horse with laminitis and actually sore in all four feet. So wherever you want to bring your horse more comfort, have them more balanced, be, improve their posture, um, you can use Surefoot. And it's really only limited by uh, your imagination. As long as you follow the simple rules of keep your hands away from the horse, hoof, let your horse vote, and pay attention to what you see in front of you. It's really, um, it's really quite a lot of fun and it's really fascinating. And I love to hear from everyone. So please join fans of Surefoot, like the Surefoot equine page, there's lots of video up on YouTube on my Surefoot channel. The Surefoot Equine website will be up soon. I'm hoping by the end of the month. So in the meantime, you can go over to MurdochMethod.com. Um, you can shop on the Murdoch Method shop to, to find Surefoot pads and also internationally where we have resellers and where we have practitioners. Um, thank you so much. The hour has flown by and I really appreciate you joining me today. I'll be back next week with more exciting webinars, lots of guests. Um, 
if you're on my website, please join my email list. You'll be the first to know the new meetings that I have scheduled for next week. And um, thanks a lot. And take care. Bye.